entrepreneur, author, poet, well, friend, <laughs> uh, cousin, <laughs> boyfriend, son, everything. I feel. Okay, so I brought you here today because I've actually been trying to record with you for a minute. <laughs> I have, and I know you've got a super busy schedule, and it's because you love doing all of those amazing things that I literally just listed off about you, right? Yes, yes. And I know that my community can really benefit from the wisdom and the advice that you have to share. So that's why I managed to squeeze you into the schedule and get you here today. So what I really wanted to ask you about is your journey into law. That's it. Nice and simple, nice and easy. It helps with it. But through that, we're going to draw out all of the gems, right? So yeah. I think the first question I've got for you is, when did you first decide that you wanted to be a lawyer? Like, what's the earliest memory you have of when you were kind of like, yeah, yeah, this is the career for you? Well, when I was in primary school, I had this idea that I wanted to be a lawyer. Like, and no one told me you should be a lawyer. Like, in school, everyone was telling me that. <laughs> Like, I didn't know any lawyer, there wasn't anyone around me or nothing like that. It was more like this, this thing in me that said, like, I want to represent people and I want to like, use my voice to, to, to support and, and amplify what people want to do. And as a kid, you can't really explain why. Like, it's, I used to like poetry a little bit, English, and all that, but didn't really know why I wanted to be. I didn't know, but it was just like, I'd love to do something like that. Yeah, what primary school was our starting point? So, I don't know, 8, 9, 10, like somewhere yeah, around yeah, there, right? right? And it's something that can stay with you. I mean, obviously, you're a qualified lawyer today. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? so yeah, what were your next steps from prime? I mean, that sounds so weird to say. Like, yeah, what were your next yeah, steps at like, 8, 9, 10? Yeah, trust After deciding yeah, that you wanted to become a lawyer, what, yeah, what, what did you do with that? What happened next? So, when I, until I was like maybe 14, 15, I didn't have more, any exposure to any lawyer whatsoever. And then once I started to see it, I didn't relate to it. And then it probably wasn't until. I'd say you, you know, when I actually started to meet lawyers and I'd get opportunities and and there was a dozen of opportunities at university that, that yeah. elevated elevated the journey and it elevated it differently. But in college, again I was still interested, but it didn't have any links to lawyers. And my college was notorious for any but law. It was everything else. Yeah. Played music and I really think I ended up with the so yeah, it, it wasn't until the university where I could take the same opportunities were coming in yeah. abundance. So yeah. I met talk about well, when you got to university, that's when like more of the opportunities were picking up for you. Sure, yeah. and stuff like that. And that all sounds very positive and amazing. And I'm sure yeah. because of all of the work that you were putting in, right from primary school, yeah. right from secondary school where you were, you know, being proactive and yeah. going to sit the old baby and stuff like that, yeah. that was part of the reason as to why all of those opportunities were coming to you, right? Yeah. But I'm sure along the way there also would have been some failures. So like um, maybe you applied yeah. for certain things that you Get it, yeah. and before you try to have conversations with certain people, they didn't go your way, and that sort of thing. So, well, yeah. can you talk to us a little bit more about how that was? Internships, I would get rejected. Many people did. People would respond back to my letters or my emails, or and I would cold call people as well. Mm -hmm. So, like back in university, I remember before I got my shoes, I would cold call. call. And actually, a cold call led me to my first work experience. Oh, wow. So that was actually good. But I would cold call people. And then say, sorry, you have to go to the website. Like, I don't really know what to expect. But I think the biggest one that I recall a failure slash a precursor to success for me was like, I used to knock on doors. Okay. So I used to knock on doors in areas where I knew like the network was high. Yeah. So uh, I thought that would, that would make sense. Um, and the point is, people I know who see my face, they think, you knocked on my door like, like 10 minutes, maybe not 10 minutes ago, but like 8, 9 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. But I would ask like, if anyone knows any lawyers, I'd like to know because I don't know them. And if you do, I would love to direct you. But I don't need to know anything else about you. Yeah. I know there's a lot of family, you know, and ironically, people who connect me with lawyers to get my first, like, instead of internship, people that I knew, and people that I built relationships with, even my family, yeah. that was just blessing me. And it was like, I now know a lawyer, they said they can help you do your thing, yeah. you know, like someone I even met on the side of the road. Like, I had a conversation with them, they ended up so awesome. So, yeah. I think that really gets confused your proactivity, right? Like, it's yeah. really important to be proactive. Yeah. And I think the second thing I'm kind of getting is community yeah. and your ability to, I guess, build and maintain that community, right? Like Perfect. the fact that you were able to call the fact that you were able to speak to members of your family, members of your community, 
we come to get them to help you, basically. Right. Like, that, that is an art and a skill within of itself. We yeah. really want to do that. So we've got yeah. proactivity, we've got community. What else can you tell us about, you know, how you were able to navigate? I mean, I think especially oh. seeing as, you know, you went to Longhouse University, yeah. right? And, I mean, there were many people going to Longhouse University. And they're absolutely fine, so it's not an issue. Yeah. Right? But for a lot of people, they, they think that it's a barrier to success or become a lawyer or something like that. So, yeah. how, how did you navigate that? It was like when I went to MTU and I went to the space, my advice actually wasn't that I was going to go to university. My advice was, I'm going to Oxford. Right. Like, I'm going to university that's going to treat me like Oxford. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to expect that. Mm -hmm. So, my expectation was never like, Oh, I'm just gonna get mediocre mm -hmm. opportunities. It was you're gonna give me the best opportunities yeah. and then some. Yeah. And I remember when I got his big history of my law school and I got the Dean's Award for the second time, I thought I did the same. Because I was like, I'm pretty certain you sent me this 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 letter last year. Yeah, and yeah it's something you get. I was like, alright, cool. <laughs> and then I figured out and knew the significance of that later on. Because when you're in that space, you don't really know what you're doing. It's not like I'm trying to make sure I'm not trying to win awards. I'm not trying to get, I wasn't really looking for a job after being a lawyer. Like, yeah. But I would still get it because I got rejected five times an interview. And I would still think to myself, well, if you don't want me, well, I'm going to find a way. Yeah. You know, and if, you don't, if I don't find a way now, I'll find another way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's the end of what happened in the day. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and just using the environment to create a space that I think I'd want to occupy if I came into the space myself. But, yeah. There's a couple of things I want to unpack from that too. So the first thing I'm getting from you is excellence. Yeah. You're someone who, like, excellence is clearly one of your core values, whatever you do, you strive to do with excellence, right? Yeah. You know, the fact that you would be campaigning, you would be the only um, candidate, but you would still be doing everything to make sure that you're doing your best. Yeah. Um, or the fact that you would make sure that you would like treat all of the opportunities you're, that you're getting from university as if it's you know the, the top, the best, like yeah, you yeah. expect the best because you deserve the best. Like, that, that is truly amazing, and yeah. I think that's really something to, to draw on there. Um, but you mentioned that you had five rejections. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And obviously, this yeah. whole series is about resilience. It's about what advice you would give to people when they keep getting those rejections so they can keep going. Yeah. And you kind of touched a little bit on motivation. So I just want to draw yeah. out from you. When you kept getting those rejections, how would you stay motivated? How would you build that resilience to keep going? Everything I tried to do the first or second year failed. Like, I was on a scholarship scheme. I felt like I was failing every single day. There's people that were smarter than me, there were people that had more connection than me, there were people that quite frankly, we were really going to be lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> like, they were really speaking like they were in practice at the time they were, they were So I was like, cool, I'm going to do that. I was not smashing my studies. Like, I'll get two twos and whatnot. And I was got a loan to defer in one of my uh, my pre my mock assessments. And the teacher said something that I will never forget. Um, when she said, like, I've got no good anymore, so I shouldn't act like it with her. And it's like, scared all these sort of like, uh, not, I wouldn't call it microaggressions, I'd call it conscious biases yeah. against me because it wasn't a conscious, like they could be saying like, you know, I know where you're from and don't act like that with me and that sort of thing. So all, that, all those circumstances for me made me feel like I was getting rejected mm -hmm. to the point where I didn't think I'd get much experience mm -hmm. and I don't think I have the confidence to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So I held up a sign outside like Little Tree and I tried to say to people like, I'm looking for experience yeah. and I, I want to get that because I was so insecure about like what was gonna happen and I felt like I was gonna fail mm -hmm. all of my exams. Then mm -hmm. I was making up my own spaces that led people to know me but my ex to lose. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the rejection meant that I didn't just rebel and say I'm failing. Yeah. Like, cool. I haven't hit the level that I want to get to my next space yet, but I'm gonna create a space for myself mm -hmm. so that you're gonna take me seriously for the space that I've created. Probably still the case now. So, yeah. I really respect that. And before I ask you my final question, yeah. I want to just get these teachers to figure out. I hope you can read my handwriting. Yes. Um, these are just random questions. So yeah. I just want to see how you think. Yeah. Do you think a random question? Yeah. Cool. So, activity holidays. Or relaxing on a day. I'm just going back on holidays. I want to hear what you have to say. Activity on a day is for relaxing on a day. Um, you know what? Uh, I think because I 
generally I'm quite active person, so I will be on the go a lot. I will do a lot of things like blah blah blah. Like, it will just be the case where just like when we go somewhere, it's just like I like to relax. I like to relax with a couple of activities in the morning. So I wouldn't say that like. See, this is a very new one. You know, I would definitely relax more. I relax a lot more. Yeah. I would definitely, I would relax a lot more. Yeah. That's what I would say. Mm-hmm. I, I think activities are one of those where it's just like, if you're going to be active, you just got to be active. Yeah. You've got to experience all the other things. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I th- I've never been the kind of person where I go for like, oh, oh, yeah. X, Y, and Z, like, or oh, everything like that. I would usually like to say, like, let me just relax and chill a little bit. You know? Let me watch a little something. Mm-hmm. Let me go somewhere here. But, you know, let me just do a little bit of self care. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, like, I need to go yeah. to each activity that they've got planned on this place because then I'm just gonna get tired of it. Yeah. So yeah, I like activity holidays, but I wouldn't say it's my preference. You know, I'll say that as an answer. And then finally, where can people find you if they want to find out more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. So. LinkedIn or find me at one. You can find me. You can find me on Instagram, not be active on there like that, but you can still find me with you know, the phone bar, the chat, or you know, these four CDs. And yeah, email's always good to reach me, so contact at kyoto.com. That's the best way to find me. So yeah, that's great. Amazing, thank you so much. Love.